Our next guest is our first guest, really, apart uh, after our first musical guest, is no stranger, like I said, to both the data on Kubernetes community as well as the Cloud Native Foundation community, as well as lots of other communities we'll probably touch on in a bit. But his name is Kunal Kushwaha. Kunal, welcome. Thanks for having me, Bart. Yes, super excited. Um, thanks a lot for the nice intro. But uh, yeah, I think I, I think like it's not just you know the things I do. I think it's all about the the work we all do together, right? So I would not be able to do good things if it, if the community support wasn't there. And I truly feel so amazing. Like KubeCon is coming up, so on Twitter I'm just seeing people getting invited to join the um, Kubernetes repo on GitHub, and you know all the DOK interns, them doing great work and. This is what I love. Like this is why we started the student initiative. We that the data on Kubernetes student thing, uh, CNCF students community, my channel or whatever. This is what we do it for. Like actually people, you know, working hard and working smart and contributing, gaining skills. And it's going to take you to a lot of places. So yeah, thanks for having me and keep up the good work. Everyone. Yeah. Anyway, obviously great. Yeah. Great, great advice. <laughs> nice recap. You know, it's no secret that you're doing a lot of stuff all the time <laughs> and everyone, everyone gets to see that in terms of, you know, obviously it's, it's an extensive workload. There are a lot of things that are going on. You're also very active working, working at Sivo, doing a great job there. You know, I think a lot of people probably ask you this, but how do you balance all these things? Yeah, the key to time management is like um, prioritizing things. And one thing that I've realized is how important is it to, it is to like saying no. That's also pretty important. So even though I'm able to do so many things, you have no idea how many things I'm saying no to. Like, I would love to help out. I would love to give a session at your college, right? Mm. <laughs> but it's just like the calendar is so packed. So I think like uh, learning how to say no, is, it's also important. And that brings me to my other point is managing priorities, right? Some things you have to definitely do. You have, you know, there's like the Eisenhower metrics, uh, urgent, not urgent, um, important, not important. So for example, these are like the four quadrants now. Something that lies in not urgent and not important, I'm not going to do it. Uh, something that lies in urgent and important, I'll do it like straight away. Something that lies in like not important, but urgent, sort of like delegate. And something that lies in urgent, but like not important, then it's also like, uh, you know, goes, goes. Yeah. pretty self-explanatory. So I think like uh, the key is loving what you do. I think in that way, you'll be able to manage your time. But everyone has like, even though everyone has 24 hours in a day, but uh, everyone has different priorities. Like some are, let's say, working parents. Okay, so their 24 hours might be different than your 24 hours. Your college might be different. You know, some, some may have some other struggles or whatever. I think it's totally like personalized, like how you balance your time and things like that. To answer your question, like from my point of view, um, college has not been that much of an issue. I'm in my final year right now, so I get a lot of free time after college. Um, with SIVO work, that's my main priority right now because I work there full time. So I do SIVO work. And other than that, it's also the company culture where I work. Like they support all of these initiatives that I run, the YouTube channel, the CNCF stuff, taking part in hackathons, managing events, doing sessions like this, for example. So I think that's also a major factor because many students, since this is a student stock, 90% of the students are going to say this. My college does not provide me enough time. If your college does not provide you enough time, let me know in the chat. I know you are there <laughs> always listening to this. <laughs> so that, today you have to delegate sort of a little bit. You know, college will also always be on your, behind your back and just <clears throat> try to see how you can make the most out of the situation. I'm not saying college is not important. It definitely is. I also have a good GPA and everything. And I also do open source and community work. So try to find the right balance and uh, divide your hours accordingly. So that is what I would recommend. Divide your hours accordingly. You know how many hours you have. So yeah, in the end, you would have to work a little bit harder because if you're managing so many things, like nothing comes easy. You want to scale a community. You want to get a good job. You want to learn something. CNCF, like the projects in the ecosystem about DevOps, it's, it's not easy. There's so many things you have to learn if you want to get like, get like a role in that, let's like, say a technical role or whatever. Mm -hmm. If you want to contribute to a big project, um, things like that. So they use a lot of technologies you might not even have heard of. A hard work is key. There is no shortcut. It's like a, it's not like going to happen overnight. Work hard, study, get involved in communities, take mentorship and guidance from people in open source, just like this session. Join the DOK Slack. Uh, that's what I would recommend. No, no, but yeah, no. just yeah. learn in public. And if you do good work, hard work, smart work, you will get the outcomes. But yeah, that's pretty much about it. And I'm now like 
just focusing on a few things because one last point uh, is uh, don't get burned out i was trying to i was feeling a little tired in the middle and i was doing so many things at once now uh, i realized like okay it will decrease my efficiency if i don't you know <laughs> set my priorities straight so i think uh, that's also your something you have to realize like don't get burned out enjoy life and enjoy the you know computer science community and all those things you do enjoy your work love your work Yep. No, I think those are all great points. Very, very valuable, very practical advice. With with that in mind, could you just talk a little bit about how your start in communities was? You know, what was the, what were the first steps that you took? Because obviously you've done a lot in a in a relatively short period of time. But how did that start? Where was the like the initial spark interaction that got you to be in the CNCF? I know that you went to KubeCon, I believe, in 2019. But just tell us a little about what were the first steps that you took in order to get on that path. Yeah, just contributions straight straight up just contributing and uh, I started contributing to Kubernetes Java client that was my very first open source contribution started with like some typo fixes and readme files documentation then I added test cases some examples and then I actually did like some major contributions like actually adding support for Kubernetes resources that were missing that was like a really like a true like I'm not saying like documentation changes are not valuable definitely they are one of the most important parts of an open source project is like documentation, but from like the coding standpoint, and I was like, obviously I was trying to learn about all these technologies and stuff. So contributing to in like a code code way, there was like some major contributions I made. From that, I got to know about KubeCon and stuff. So in the, the maintainers shared about it, like, hey, you can definitely try it out. But those were sort of like my first contributions in the open source community. This was like the end of my freshman year. And ever since then, I have not like looked back I'm involved in so many stuff and cncf and stay, taking initiatives starting initiatives because i realized like it would have been really difficult for me if the community was not there to help me in the initial days and that's what i realized now like there might be many other people who need help and only the people who have gone through that process can give you know provide help so that's what i like sort of like giving back and stuff that's it that yeah <laughs> no 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 the great points I think I think for a lot of folks as well too the sort of uh, imposter syndrome of fear that like mm. what we I just say I'm just telling you the questions that I get a lot and I'm sure you do too. Yeah, yeah. What what are the prerequisites? Do I need to have this? Do I need to have that? Um, do I need to be an expert? What do you say to those kinds of questions? So the thing is, uh, it depends what you want to do. So if you want to do like non-code contributions and stuff, get started today itself. Join the join the SIG Contravex and. Uh, just get started with contributions. Not much prerequisites for that. Um, for open source, I would say having the knowledge of Git is very important. And um, other than that, uh, basic to medium knowledge of your tech stack. So we're not just talking about CNCF over here. Like hmm. open source is everywhere. So you want to contribute to web dev projects, machine learning, you know, blockchain if you want. There's a hyperledger organization. Uh, you know, CNCF projects. Let's say there's so many CNCF projects, monitoring, and all these other things, Thanos, Prometheus, and things like that. Kubernetes itself. So these prerequisites, sort of like obviously the tech stack prerequisites, depends on the you know, project to project. But uh, whatever you are comfortable with, you'll definitely find projects in that domain. Um, one thing that I can definitely, one thing you should take away from this particular answer is, don't wait to like finish the entire thing in order to contribute, because projects in open source they move so fast. And you're going to be like, hey, let me first be an expert in Golang, then I'll contribute. No, you will not get anywhere like that. Like, uh, learn on the go, contribute on the go. Uh, even if you know like a little bit, just learn on the go and like contribute. So I would say, don't worry about prerequisites. It's is my answer. Uh, just get started, and you will know yourself what things are required to solve the issues that you are interested in. So. To be, to be quite frank, don't worry about prerequisites because you will find that as you go along. Yeah, I think it's a great point. Because if you worry about prerequisites, you'll be stuck in the loop and it will you'll get, Yeah, exactly. You'll get paralyzed if you won't take that first step. And so the worst thing that can happen is that if there are prerequisites, you'll be informed mm -hmm. and then you can go somewhere else and it's no big deal. And you deal. can learn. Yeah, yeah that's, it. That's, that's it. it. that's it. That's it. And so yeah. to really understand that these things, as you said previously, it takes time. We always tell folks like Rome wasn't built in a day. You're not going to mm. become a DevOps expert in three weeks. And if anybody tells you that you are, they're wrong. <laughs> um, they're lying to you and they're probably trying to get your money. Um, so don't don't fall for those kind of traps. These things take time. But once again, enjoy it as a process and not just a technical process. I like to know in your in your particular case, from the community perspective, who, you know, because it, there are obviously, I'm sure, a lot of different people you've interacted with. But tell us more about the people side in terms of uh, the, the people that kind of helped you out and got you started. Oh, yeah, it has been great. Um, I mean, 
I learn from the people in the community every day. Um, so you, know, you, for example, I love your raps. Uh, anytime I want to collaborate, Bart is always down. <laughs> so, I am, it's, uh, just I, <laughs> so it's always fun to collaborate with collaborate with Bart and uh, where I work, Sivo, it's also like focused like cloud native uh, in, the, in the very active in the cloud native community. So a plug right there, but uh, do check us out. But uh, yeah, the, the the people I work with, they are very supportive. Anything I want to learn, they are very supportive. Any uh, any ideas I have, they are very supportive. Uh, YouTubers, the cloud native YouTubers. You know, the Data on Kubernetes channel, uh, Anais, Sayam, Rockhold, you know, all these other people, like, uh, so helpful, right? And they always, you know, Cloud Native TV, for example, so many shows running. Other than that, uh, the people, who, who else did I interact with? The Kubernetes marketing team, uh, you know, the marketing meeting, uh, shout out to the marketing. And we have a, me, Bart, me and Bart, and uh, at the end of the panel, we have a panel at KubeCon, uh, rocking non-code contributions. So make sure you visit that. It's uh, going to be pretty nice. It's going to contribute to open source in a non-code way. Um, but yeah, I mean, initially the people who helped me were like in the, if, you, if you're looking for like, uh, you know, specifics, then uh, th the first project I contributed to, Kubernetes Java Client. There were maintainers over there. Uh, I was a GSOC student in my freshman year. So my mentors were Devang and Rohan. Uh, they helped me uh, quite a lot, gave me great feedback. Um, other than that, uh, it has been just a lot of fun. People I interact with daily on Twitter and stuff. Um, people I collaborate with, uh, people who support my community, like, you know, Teleport and Daytree and all these other uh, open source, like, you know, like uh, projects and stuff. So it, it, Battlesnake, for example, they also heavily support my like, the community we have. So it, it has been like great. Overall, I learn from everyone. Last but not least, the students. I learn a lot from students every day. So, you know, uh, cherish your beginner's mindset because you're only a beginner once. Um, beginners can really contribute in a really big way. So I learn a lot from students every day. Um, on our, it's, it's just that overall, it's been like amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I think anyway, you said people. about uh, the beginner's mind, the beginner's mindset, like, that's actually something that's going to be mentioned in our panel, so not, not too many spoilers, but how your inexperience, your inexperience is a gift. Um, mm -hmm. and, but like I said, no, I'm, that's the only thing I'm going to say. You can check out that panel next week uh, in, in KubeCon. Um, we'll be there hanging out and answering questions as well, too. Also, what you're saying about, you know, for some people, they're kind of afraid about, you know, reaching out and establishing contact. You have nothing to lose, all right? But if you mm -hmm. really want to establish contact, let's say with a maintainer of an open source project, Make sure you've done a little bit of homework first. A little bit of homework, mm. a little bit of Googling, a little bit of reading goes a long way. If you jump mm. in and just start, you know, demanding help, you might get it, but you're gonna be you're gonna get a lot more help. I always tell people the same thing. If yeah. you actually just take five, ten minutes, watch a couple of videos, get familiarized with some of the documentation, the vocabulary, and yeah. I think it makes a big difference. You see that the thing is, I definitely agree. And see, the yeah. thing is. This is why I don't make any guidance videos anymore because it's of no use. Like everything is out in the as, open as, and as many, you have yeah. to work hard. Yeah, <laughs> you have to work hard. What else do you want? Miss? There's no magic mantra to contribute to open source. Whatever project you want to work on, you would have to learn about it. And there's something you will realize when you ask questions. See, when you ask questions, then um, people are not going to give you the direct answer most of the time. They will point you to resources, right? So they're going to be like, hey, there's some resources, check it out. So watch please it, ask good again, questions. Watch this, yeah. watch this video, read this mm. blog post, you know, ask them yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Because what I always tell people is like- No one you, has the time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really exactly. Trying. Yeah, and, and yeah. also if, if you really care about something, you you should be willing to spend 10 to 30 minutes to 60 minutes of a little yeah. bit of research doing your homework. It's also, nope. yeah. it's also helping you only. If someone gives you the answer straight away, your growth ends there. Yep. No, it's true. Someone gives you the gift of, of the opportunity to take that further and really explore something. Mm. I, think that's, I think that's a really solid point to keep in mind as well.